Um, thanks, everyone. And Chris, I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping that you'd point out the coming fireballs we could see in the next month from your sky this month. But I guess not. Um, so we, I'm going to talk about uh, a fireball that we saw when we were in Arizona in February. Uh, last month I talked about meteorites, but we also saw a brilliant uh, fireball. And for the first time uh, in my life, I decided to look and see if I could report it, because there were three of us that saw it at the same time. And I found a site eventually that uh, I could report it and put it in, and found that there were others who reported it, and we saw the trajectory, and it was kind of neat. So I want to talk about that. How many of you have seen a fireball before? Uh, it's, it's a good crowd. You, you mostly look up, so you see more than the regular population. How many saw a really, really bright one, like brighter than a quarter moon or something? Not, not too many. They say that to see one brighter than the quarter moon, you see that in maybe 200 hours of meteor observing. So, how many hours have you put in since the last one? <laughs> You've got 200 hours for the next fireball. So, we saw this uh, last one. So, uh, meteoroid entering the atmosphere that's really large, bright, uh, will be a fireball. So, if it's brighter than the Venus, say, three to four magnitude, then you've got a fireball. And uh, if the fireball uh, explodes, then you've got a gold. So the Chelyabinsk uh, meteor that came down, that was a super gold. Um, so a fireball uh, happens for those brief seconds that uh, it's traversing from a few kilometers down into lower stratus before it hits this portion here, where it's traveling so slow, it's reached terminal velocity, uh, and it's no longer ablating material, and it's no longer giving off flow. So the fireball you see at a fairly high altitude. And uh, if you wanted to report them, what do you do? And why would you report Well. There's a few reasons, and I found these in the last observer standing by. Uh, it alerts media researchers, like the ones you have in Calgary and Western, uh, an event, or all sky camera operators. And I think you have one at the Car Observatory, and that's part of the uh, other. It also adds to the global database whether or not. These are meteor shower related, and we met not to. And it allows you to perhaps find a meteorite fall uh, to assist in recovery if you get enough points to triangulate it, if you see radar images, uh, and can it help in uh, uh, finding a meteorite that may have come from a fireball? They don't all produce meteorites, but some do. And of course, to rule out uh, any catastrophic uh, events. And uh, this one I found interesting, that uh, it can be used to help calibrate, calibrate uh, explosion detection for uh, detection of violations of the nuclear test ban treaty. I never would have thought that, but it's an interesting reason to report them. So where do you report them? Now, if you're in Canada, there's a couple of options. You can report them to MIA, the Meteorites Impact Advisory Committee, and uh, there's a form you fill out on that website, uh, and it gets sent uh, to Calgary, uh, University of Calgary, where it's uh, reported or the one that I use, and you can use this in Canada as well, the American Meteor Society. It's a wonderful site if you're interested in meteors. 
And they have, uh, I believe they also have a mobile app you can use on their phones to carry it around all the time. You see one walking home, there it is. Uh, failing that, you can also report Canadian loans by uh, faxing a report with this kind of information. And they all require, ask for this kind of information, something that, to identify you, uh, maybe some contact information in case they want clarification, uh, an accurate time as possible, uh, where you are located, uh, where the fireball was in the sky, what angle it was going, where you started, where you saw it initially, and where the endpoint was, um, the estimated uh, magnitude, say compared to Venus or the Moon, or it will be brighter than other stars at the fireball. Uh, and uh, whether there was any trail, how long it was uh, visible, and any other information, such as any colors you notice, whether it broke up, uh, whether there was any sound and what that sound delay was. Uh, and of course, if you had any evidence video, photos, whatever, uh, you'd be interested in that. So this is the Maya form, um, and the link is in the presentation. You put in your contact information here, some information here about the fireball, uh, you know, when, it, when it was observed, what the location was, oh, it's brightness. So brightness relative to uh, the moon, I think that is. No, sorry, this is the location. Uh, so stellar coordinates, uh, altitude or azimuth coordinates, or relative to stars, to pinpoint where this uh, uh, fireball was observed. And then characteristics, bright, so the moon, duration, etc. Those kind of things that I had on the earlier slide that wasn't. But I used this uh, website, the American Meteor Society, a wonderful website. So you go there and uh, you can enter all of this information using a nice app. And they have a uh, useful warning here to cut out some of the ones that uh, are not fireballs, like the traditional plane going across the sky with lights, or uh, whatever other events occurring in fireworks. So they try to uh, eliminate those false positives that we brought. So, I started to put in a fictitious uh, So here's the science center, and I, and you can move a little person around. You can put in, you know, where you are. So it brings up Google Maps. You put in where you were standing. Uh, so it gets your uh, latitude, longitude. You put in the time, uh, and you put in how long was it visible. And you give you a nice pop-up chart and pick one of those. And then you put in information about uh, where did it go. So they've got a nice little meteor there, and you can do, use a slider to slide it to show the angle that it was going down or going, it doesn't go up, but going down. Uh, and uh, similarly, they had uh, an app to uh, another screen where you can put in uh, uh, here after you put in your location and the direct this. Can you see the blue there? The direction you were looking and you saw. And then here you can put the green line, the height above the horizon that it started at, the height where it stopped. Uh, and you can put in the direction where it started, 
from where it stopped on the map like this. I didn't put in all the charts. So it's very easy to use, even on a, a mobile phone. And then you put in an estimate of the brightness. And here they do it by uh, relative to uh, Venus, the quarter moon, the full moon, and, and so on. Um, a lot of the really bright ones, say, that might result in a meteorite, would be around minus 9 magnitude, which would be uh, around a quarter moon. Right. So you enter that information. And then we've got a chart here that uh, it's a little hard to fill out uh, the color that you notice in the meteor. Because the colors will tell you uh, something about what uh, minerals were ablating on, or burning off on the meteor, as well as uh, something about the oxygen or nitrogen that was ionized. When a meteor comes through, uh, about I think it's 95 percent of the color is from ablation material, and five percent in the ionization. I think I have it. Uh, but it's very, very hard on a bright fireball to tell the colors uh, as a problem of our vision, persistence of vision. So you see a certain color and it persists, and then you think you see another color, and they sort of overlap, and you're not sure. So, and it's harder, the brighter the fire. But you give that a try, and I did for the, the one we had, uh, the one we observed, and then when I went in and looked at the observations, because you could look at the other observations that other observers had, uh, they had, some were the same, some saw different colors. They were all, they were all in different locations in Arizona. But it was very interesting to uh, go and uh, observe that. Oops. That's the one. Okay, uh, and then put in something about the sounds, if you've heard any at all. Um, Higher up, uh, well, say 20 kilometers up or higher, you might uh, hear a sonic coming from. And what they recommend is to listen for maybe about five minutes after you see the fireball. I didn't know it at the time, but I found this out afterwards. Because sound travels only at about 20 kilometers a second, and if the meteorites or the fireball is very far away from you, it's going to take minutes for it to arrive to you, maybe seconds, but probably minutes. So listen and see if there was any sound coming from that. Uh, there are also uh, these kind of phonic sounds that happen concurrent or at the same time as you see the fireball. They're not quite sure what it is. They think it has something to do with radio waves uh, emanating from the meteor's passage through the Earth's atmosphere. So I mentioned anything about that. Uh, and then, was there any persistent train or trail? Uh, or higher up, there could be a smoke trail. Uh, and was there any flash at the end? In our case, there were eight observations across Arizona, and only one person observed uh, a flash or a breakup of the, uh, the, uh, uh, of the fireball, all the rest of us didn't see it. So you report that, and then you put in a little bit of information about yourself, and they give an opportunity here to say something about your observing experience, whether you have none or whether you experience astronomy or an experience therapy. And come back. A day or two days later, this is after about three days, a number of other people, I think there's eight of us in total, put in observations. I was down here, the southern one, uh, and the other people furthest north was around Phoenix. So this is about a two hour drive. Uh, so 
from that information, they calculate meteor, uh, the fireball's path is meteor. Uh, and you'll notice it's going up here to east of Flagstaff, uh, right around Wilcox, and strangely enough, that's where meteor crater is. You know, <laughs> one kilometer wide giant crater created thousands of years ago. Uh, so I wondered for a second whether there was another tiny one there, you know, or there was a fireball. But I didn't read anything about it in the paper after we were seeing it in the websites. You know, but you can go to AMS Fireball Reporting and you'll see that there's fireballs reported every single week, practically every day, across the U.S. Um, so the, these are uh, the references from the meteorite talk. And the starred ones here, that one there on the top is the MIAC uh, link. Uh, there's some interesting information there. And this is the American Meteor Society. And this is also another place where we can report your uh, observation. And the observer's handbook. <laughs> Uh, also has a section that talks about meteors and mentions some things about uh, fireballs as well. So, good luck hunting for fireballs. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.